Hello and welcome to the Embers Mod Spotlight. First thing you're going to want to get is Caymanite Blend. It's made with clay and a lot of sand. From there you can make various different things including Caymanite Brick and Caymanite Plate. Uh, the raw Caymanite Plate is actually, in terms of plate recipes in this mod, it has a unique recipe. One of the more interesting things you can make though is the Caymanite Ring. Uh, it requires some brick walls, some bricks. If you place it down, it creates this ring of Caymanite bricks, but you can actually jump over them. If you look at towards the center block and you jump, you can actually do a tower pretty easily. And then if you get uh, break them, you don't get the brick walls back, you get the actual Caymanite rings back. If we move over here, this is a world structure, so you can see we've got various uh, different blocks in here. Let's have a look. So we've got the archaic bricks. These were the ashen brick walls. They're actually made from ashen tiles. So if you look at what they, so you can see it's quite a complex recipe actually for this. So there's ashen stone, and then they come from the ashen tile. So there's various things in, so these are all the different ashen blocks, various bricks, various stones, double slab, stairs. And we also have the archaic blocks. So the archaic blocks, as you might be able to tell, they've got a little orange to them. And the lights as well. So you can see they've got an ember shard in that. The edge has got an ember shard. Yeah, you can't actually um, create the archaic bricks until you've progressed in the mod. So even though you can mine them, you'll only be able to get the tiles or the bricks at this stage. So it's worth taking the edges and the lights if you find this structure. Now how do you actually get embers then? Because obviously the other thing that is involved in having these sort of things is ember shards. So how do we get them? Well, the answer is with this thing, the ember bore. The ember bore is made with a mechanical core, which is made with that. Lead plates, by the way, um, you need the tinker's hammer, uh, and it can create various different plates, including, you may also notice, there's actually bronze, and there's also electrum as well. One of the ways to actually look for ember is with the atmospheric gauge. So once you make that, you can see it doesn't necessarily matter too much as long as you have a decent like some ember in there which which is equates to the gauge being a little bit full up then it's fine what you need to do is you need to place the ember bore down close to bedrock so this will let the the bore um, mine the ember from from bedrock if we look at how we might want to place it if we place it down we have to place it on the top or bottom face and you can see it's got some interesting qualities to it. So what we generally want to have, and you can see that all the blocks are sort of see-through, is that in this level here, we want the blades to be touching bedrock. So the bottom of the, bottom of the blades touching bedrock. And that's all there is really to it. And you'll notice that here we have the... This is the spot for the input and the output. So when we put a mechanical core in there, it will be able to both input and output items. So if we look at the one in actual operation, we have a hopper, and what this hopper is doing is it's feeding coal to power the bore. You can see it goes in. And then we have a few things here. We have a redstone powered item extractor going to a pipe, and this is going into the chest, which is what the yield is. So we've got ember crystals, ember grit, and ember shards. And these recipes are fairly uh, straightforward as well. Okay, let's just begin by talking about some of the basic stuff. One of the first things you may want to do is this thing. You may have just seen there, the Tinker's Lens. Pretty simple recipe. And what it will allow you to do is, if you look at machines, you'll be able to see additional information. So we can know that this thing, the Ember Activator, is going to emit Ember. Uh, and that is also a very simple recipe. So what I'm going to do is do something with water transfer. We need to connect up the Activator. We need to put an emitter on it, which is simple. And we need to put a receptor on the the block that's going to do the work, which is in this case the mechanical pump. So the way we do that is we just put the receptor on the bottom face. If you look through the lens, you can see it says actuate a slot. Um, so this is the slot we need to activate, and we're going to connect up this slot. So the way to do that is we get the tinker's hammer, shift right click, and then we right click onto the emitter, and you get that you know, that sort of anvil sound. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in four ember shards. Uh, there's a specific reason for that I'll get into in a minute. Um, but once you put the ember shards in, 
because this is activated, it's able to send over some... You can see we've currently got zero. This is a fluid vessel. We've currently got zero in here. And the ember's coming over. The pump is actually working, but it's just going very, very slowly. And that's a problem with the pump, in that it's a mechanical pump, so it may be better suited to mechanical power. Okay, so we ended up getting to about four buckets. Okay, so we may want to get water a lot faster than that, because for the pressure refinery, we're actually going to need it. And the way to do that, let's have a look at this setup I've got. Same thing, we'll put in four ember shards. Look at the speed of the pump now. And here's a reservoir. Each of these Caymanite rings I put on top of the reservoir block. So the reservoir block is made like this with a fluid vessel. Um, each one takes 40 buckets of the rings. The way it works is using the add-on mod which is called uh, Mystical Mechanics. Which is new to the Embers Rekindled sort of ecosystem. And probably the most crucial thing is the, the mini boilers. So what I do is I put the ember shards in here. That spot right in the middle. It's distributing the ember shards equally between each of the boilers. So, each bo so when I put in four, obviously each boiler gets one. From there, because these levers are activated, it puts them into the middle. And then they always have to go up there. And then that goes to the steam engine. So the steam engine normally would require coal and water, obviously directly supplying the steam is a good idea. And then it goes into the gearboxes, which as you can see here, gears actually have to be put in there. Um, then we go into the gearboxes, and we go round, and we go into this mechanical actuator, there's gear in there as well. And then that goes into the mechanical pump, which will then create large amounts of water. And then here what I can do is, at the moment you can see these these, bo these boilers, if you if you let them get too full and then you start putting embers in them, they're going to explode. So the best thing that I've found is obviously you get a large excess of water here. So just let them go down a bit in the amount of water. So if we just look at what we get for each one. So I put in four here. You see that immediately went down by 400. So I can just let that go down a bit. And then when it gets to about 2,000, what I'll do is I'll just flip... Uh, I'll swap these levers around, and you can see this is actually this is actually um, got a problem here, right? And it does show you the problem. And you can see that this tank is filling up. And obviously, I'm generating so much water at the moment that it's not going to. I'm not going to have enough room for it. So the way to deal with that, just take a few more Caymanite rings. You can see it's all we're filling. And that should be enough. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. And like I say, it generates a lot of water. So then I can just do the shards. Put those in again. You can see there should be no more errors now. Everything should be draining. But yeah, you can really see how much water you're going to get. It's a lot. So now that we've got a lot of water, we need to use it for something. And we also need to make some alloys, which will help us progress in embers. So here's the pressure refinery. So this block, if you put a, a metal block underneath it and eight lava source blocks around it, it will get three times the yield from the embers that you provide it by the side here. And it also needs, obviously, water. So, let's uh, use this first block, which is the melter. So this is going to melt down any ingots or ores into their molten forms. Put a couple in there like that. And you can see that it's going to go through this tube, and then we have a fluid transfer with a copper filter. So you just right-click a copper bu bucket on it. It doesn't consume the bucket. And what we'll end up with is one ingot of copper, and then at this point the gold will not obviously not want to go this way, and it will go here instead. And then I can transfer those two over like that. I go in. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, what I could do is I could turn on this lever. And we go around here into the stamper. And I have a, a mold in here for a bar which would turn it into an ingot, essentially. But what I want to do, obviously, is make the dawnstone. 
So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate... So this is currently off from the extracting into the stamper. Okay, so I'll turn this on and this on. And it does it very quickly, actually. So that's already mixed it down into molten... Two in, two, uh, 288 millibuckets of molten dawnstone. So now when I turn this on... One... Two... And then in this bin underneath, it actually has a nice animation. So if you right click the bin, you can see I can get those two ingots of dawnstone. So if we're going to get into embers more, we need to get more of a grip on the numbers. So here I have uh, an ember dial. So this will show how much ember is actually in it. So we're going to put use this ender. We're going to use this. So we're going to use this ember activator, and you can see it's going to get 400. And I'm putting it into this copper cell, which is used to store embers. It can go a little bit lower, so it might end up on 390. Um, but yeah, I've I've when I've put in multiple. There's not much loss, but it's it's normally about 400 ember per ember shard. Now we go back to the pressure refinery. I just put some water in uh, manually. Um, I've got a production multiplier of three times, and that's actually dependent. You need the the eight lava source, but you also need to make sure you have an electrum block underneath. So a different type of block will have a, will yield a different production multiplier. Three, as I mentioned before, is the highest, so you're going to want an electrum block there. So let's have a look what happens if I do this now. Okay, so we've got 400 from the other one. And from this one we've got 1200, as you might expect. Okay, one of the things you can do with Dawnstone is make some Dawnstone tools. Uh, you can make the pickaxe, the clockwork pickaxe, the clockwork battle axe, and also the grand hammer. And if you look at the enchantments, you can see that you can put both tool and weapon enchants on these items. And also, look at the attack. They're significantly more powerful than diamond. And, that's not all. There's actually more you can do with them. Here I have a copper charger. And in the copper charger is this, a mantle jar. So these, this is an item which you can place anywhere in your inventory. There's also this thing, the mantle cartridge. This has to be, you have to hold this in your offhand while you use it. Um, and it will drain a little bit, like five ember each time. This mantle jar drains more ember, uh, but you don't have to have it in your offhand. So, and they're similar sort of cost. They're both very early game items. And, and in fact, the copper charge is also early game. So you could do this before Dawnstone, but obviously all the items that actually use ember will require these Dawnstone tools. So, that's why I showed it here. Let's have a look and see what we can do then. So, the pickaxe. So you see I've got 2,000 ember here. Like I say, it's a shovel. And you can see we're going through about 10 each time. Pretty fast shovel. Obviously, I've got efficiency 4 in it as well. Um, but it would actually, it's, it's 9.5 attack as well, so it's actually significantly more powerful than the diamond sword as well. Uh, you can see you've got this area here. So pretty nice destruction speed. And if we get an enemy here, let's have a look. So we've got this uh, Grove Sprite from Primitive Mobs. And you'll see it sets the enemy actually on fire. Like so. Okay, here we have the Clockwork Battle Axe. So this obviously works like an axe. So let's have a look see how it does here. Just like an axe. Nothing too uh, unusual about that. Also, and it will also have the same effect to set things on fire. A little bit more ferociously. But the most ferocious is this, the Grand Hammer. So the Grand Hammer actually destroys blocks. And you'll notice there's no drops. So it will it will destroy all blocks without dropping anything. So no drops. So if we take the coal, nothing there. And similarly destroy. 
So there's another two weapons that we have here. So for instance, the blazing ray is a bit like a uh, a gun. So you can see it has a beam of fire. The cinder staff, though, is will charge up a huge beam of fire, and this will have more damage. So it's about there is the limit. And you can see you get a much larger effect. Okay, here I have a beam cannon. So the beam cannon will send a very strong pulse of ember. So it currently has 200 ember inside. So if we send this pulse, you see it'll go through the fence gate and destroy everything. So here we've got the ember relay. So you can see, I can just relay the ember around. So I'm going into this copper cell. Um, the thing about copper cell though is not really the, the one you want to use. This is the block you need. Uh, this is the crystal cell. It's a much larger block. The way you power this block is is like it's like anything. For instance, I can pipe items directly into here, into the mechanical core. But obviously, if you want to connect it to an ember source, you do need a machine accessor. So if I pipe items in here, so you can see, let's just put in a stack of crystals. You can see what happens to the crystal. You can see that the internal storage is getting massively buffed. So you can store quite a lot in here. So there's a the stack. You can actually go further than that as well. Now that's maxed out though, so what's that? 1.44 million. And then the cool thing is you can go in and you get a really nice <laughs> particle effect as well. This is uh, the beam splitter that will split beams. So you put it into the inputs of these sides and the outputs of these sides. So let's see, we've got an emitter on there at the moment. So we just get a lever. And we'll connect up one of these copper sides. So essentially what I'll be able to do, if I wanted to do something like this, I'd be able to put the uh, receptor here. And I'd be able to distribute to to two different sources from it. So obviously that way I can make more you know, this is this is the only way I believe to split up the ember into multiple sources like this. Okay, so here's the, the beam cannon. You can see it's gradually getting power. And when I put a lever on it, it's gonna shoot a, a bolt, it's gonna use up about four hundred. And you can see it's using up a decent amount of power. So to get to 400 takes a while. If we then put an ejector on it, let's have a look at that. So let's uh. So you can see it's definitely filling up faster. But what's actually happening is some of the ember is flying off into the distance. So you can see it's filling up faster, so we could shoot more, more regularly, but not that regularly. And that's only because the so the output from the is much higher, right? So you need to pair up to the receptor, which is higher. And that's this guy, the ember funnel. So let's shoot. And you can see it's already so I can literally shoot it constantly. Okay, so here we have an automatic breaker. So it works without any power, any ember or anything. And what it will be able to do is I'll be able to put items into a bin behind it. So it'll automatically break anything in front and place in the bin behind. This is the hearth coil, so I'm just pairing it with a machine accessor at the bottom there. And also using another item I haven't shown yet, which is the item dropper. So if we put some raw items in here, like some fish, you can see they're all going to get dropped in. 
and it gradually speeds up as more, as it gets hotter and hotter. So you can see it's going at a pretty decent rate now. I think it will go even faster soon though. So it's pretty good. Pretty good as a way to cook. So there's also this block, the cinder plinth. So I've got some dirt which I'm burning in here, just powered by this ember funnel. And you can see I'm able to extract the the ash piles out the bottom. Now without the bin underneath, it will actually go everywhere. So what I'll do here is I'll just get a chest and I've got this item vacuum. And so what I'll be able to do is just burn as many items as I want. Just right click into them. It will convert them to ash piles and the item vacuum will be able to vacuum all those items up. There's also this thing I've equipped, the ash and amulet, which is a uh, pretty easy to make to make with an ash pile. I also put the dawnstone mail in there, which goes in the body slot with the baubles. Uh, and then what happens, so I've got currently got an empty inventory, and we actually get ash from killing enemies, which is pretty cool. Okay, so the main thing that we want to do now is alchemy. To do alchemy you need this, the exchange tablet, and you also need to have these alchemy pedestals, which can be fed with ash piles. Atop the pedestals, you need to have aspectus, or whatever the plural that might be. And the way you get that is you put in a stamp at Embershard with some molten metal, and you'll get the aspectus for that metal. So you do it all the various different metals. So here we have dawnstone, copper, lead, silver, and iron. And then you can begin to do things. So, the first thing I want to make is the Ember Crystal Cluster because it's a very important crafting ingredient for a lot of recipes. And to do that we're going to need three shards, Ember Shards, Gunpowder, Ember Crystal, and then we're also going to need some Dawnstone and some Copper. Now it says 24 to 48, so the way you want to do this is is, you, is at the end of the the actual creation of this item. If it fails, it will tell you how much you're off by. So what you want to go for is the lower bound. So I want to put in 24 of each. Of each of the Dawnstone and the Copper. Um, I've I've conveniently placed these in a way that I can root them quite easily. So I'll put 24 in each of, the, of them here, right? And it should be... So they should be equally distributed at this point. Then what I want to do is place in the ingredients for the crafting. So in they go, and then we'll place the the um, the bit the uh, the ember crystal on top. And then let's give it a go. So you can see it starts to create the item. And if this process starts, it means that the recipe... Give it a few blasts, why not? Okay, so out pops our chemical waste. And like I was saying, well actually I didn't really say it, and you can see the Dawnstone inaccuracy is 5, the Copper inaccuracy is 5. And I put in 24 of each into each of these two. So we know that the, the, the answer is going to be 29 of each. Right, so we'll put in the stuff, and we'll put in these items, and we'll place our final ember crystal in here. Oh, I must have accidentally put it in. There we go. And... That's about it. A few more blasts.
Oh, it's like blasting it. And there we go, we have an Ember Crystal Cluster. Okay, there is an unlikely scenario that you may suffer magic damage, such as this one. And you can see you've got two and a half hearts of damage. If you want to avoid magic damage, you may want to put on the Amulet of the Heretic. And that will actually prevent about 90% of magic damage. So, pretty cool. The other bauble you may want to put on is the Explosion Charm. You can't put the Ashen Amulet here as well. You have to choose one of the two there. Uh, and the Explosion Charm, take a look at it. Just simply neutralizes creepers. Okay, let's uh, talk briefly about some more alchemy recipes. So, you may want to get the Mantle Bulb, and that requires an Ember Crystal Cluster. As do these three items, the Ember, the, the Ember Ring, the Ember Belt, and the Ember Amulet. Now, the Mantle Bulb uses a lot less, has a lot less storage, and if you augment it with these three baubles as well, it will actually use less. When you, so, obviously, it makes up for the fact that the storage is much lower. So, you can put that one in there, that one in there. So, you can't put the... So, you'd have to make a, ch a, a choice. So, you'd have to have the, the Ember Amulet up there. But using this setup, we'll get the maximum use of your, your clockwork tools. An another couple of things to mention are that you can also do alch alchemy by making... You can make netherrack and you can also make soul sand using ash piles uh, in the exchange tablet. A few more things about alchemy as well that I kind of didn't mention is that you can use a using a flat stamp in the stamper turn any alchemical waste once you've obviously worked out what the answer is to the number of ash piles you need you can then convert them back into more ash piles or one. <laughs> then there's also this the glimmer crystal and this is pretty cool. What you can do is you can place down light sources and it will recharge if as long as it's light, there's light in the air. So obviously it won't work at night time. But they're very, very nice light sources, these things. So there's that. And also you've got adhesive, which is just bone meal and clay. And with this, it is a slime ball replacement. So the next thing to look at is to make some of this stuff, this ashen fabric. So that's made like so, and you also want to make some inflictor gems as well, like that. And what you can do with these is you can actually attune them to take certain types of damage while you're holding them, or in your offhand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spawn a guardian. Okay, so we'll take a look at the Inflictor Gem. And the Guardian, as soon as he attacks, we get Indirect Magic. Okay, so Indirect Magic. And I also I also got the regular magic as well. That was I got that from the uh, Fangs, the Evoker Fangs. But you can also get it from Potion, in, uh, from Poison and Instant Damage as well, Potions. And then the Cactus Damage. So essentially all you have to do is try to take a certain type of damage. And then you can put it on the Inflictor Gems. You can take, take like drowning damage, for instance. So fairly unusual in the in terms of what you could normally do in modded, just be able to do that because you can actually do something with that. And what you can do is you could make armor using this ashen fabric, which is made like this. You can make all the different pieces of armor. I really just want to show the chest plate here. You can obviously enchant all the pieces of armor, but the chest plate is the one that's kind of most interesting. So say we enchant this ashen cloak. What I can then do is I can then socket, I guess is the way to put it, various different gems in. So we say we want that. So, so with a simple piece of string, we'll be able to do that, right? And you can see it says two tags. And now it says three tags. So what I'm able to do here, this is already pretty good armor, is I'm able to minimize the effect of various different types of damage. And that's pretty cool. And you can put up to seven of these gems in. 
You can also just put regular gems in, and I think they just work in a sort of like protection way. But by actually attuning the gems, you'll be able to do a lot more. Okay, so here we've got a pretty cool system. And what's going on here is we've got these these crystals, and they are crystal seeds made out of metals. And they're a simple alchemy recipe. And essentially what's happening is these seeds, they're, they're shedding... I mean, the only way to look at it is they're shedding their skin, even though it makes no sense with metals. But that's essentially what's happening. And I'm accelerating the power using these ember injectors. And the power creation system is actually a bit different as well. So we've got this Ignum reactor. There we go. And we just put that in the middle here. It's just one block thing. And then we have the two block height. We have the catalysis chamber and the combustion chamber. And if you look on the dial here, you can see I've got a production multiplier of 9. And that's essentially because each of these is giving 4 times production, and then it's adding 1. So it's doing, you know, 2x plus 1, basically. And what you want to do is have these fairly even. So I put blaze powder and glowstone, because they're both 4 and base, both the maximum. And these, these other things, so in, com in combustion, coal and nether brick are less. Coal's the least, and then redstone's the least in with regards to catalysis. Um, and gunpowder's a bit more. Okay, there's another thing you can do with the uh, melter. You can make this alchemical slurry. What you can do with this is you can make these things, these, catal these catalytic plugs. Each plug... The plug will double the speed of the machine. So... If you have two, which is the maximum, you can quadruple the speed. So if I wanted to quadruple the speed of the Ember Injector to get Metal Shards more quickly, what I'd do is I'd just put some in here. You can see the red smoke come out there. And this will increase the speed of the, of the machine by four times. Okay, let's talk a little about weaponry now. So here I have this thing, which is called the turfing, and I'll speak a bit more about the heat value in a moment. Um, but this is a fully armoured diamond zombie, and I'm literally one-shotting it. So I do have sharpness 5 on, but still, it's pretty good to be able to do that. And what I'm currently doing is I'm trying to level up the heat bar. So what you'll see... And with that noise, that tells you that the heat bar is now f fully ready and it will start glowing. And I've also done the same on the pickaxe, so you can see that's glowing. But how do you get these things in the first place? Well, you have to use the Dawnstone Anvil. The Dawnstone Anvil, you can either do it by hand or you can use an automatic hammer. So say I wanted to repair these diamond leggings. What I would do is I'd put down the item I want to repair and the diamond and they're completely repaired with just one diamond which is obviously much cheaper than the anvil. Now if I wanted to repair an item which is more damaged you can also do use the anvil for various things. So if I wanted to repair an item that was damaged I would need to use ash piles. Now if this is much more damaged, I would need to use multiple ash piles for this. And because the Dawnstone Anvil can only take two items, you can't actually use, do... You have to use a regular anvil to repair things like this. The way we would add a heat modifier to an item is... We put two motive cores down. And that changes it into a motive, a motive core with heat on it. And then what we can do is we place our item down with a motive core and then the item then gets the heat attribute and then we and then we can begin leveling it so obviously for the weapon we would hit things and for pickaxe we would mine for armor we take damage so I'm currently working on ash and cloak and that's pretty cool so here we have the inferno forge just powered with embers from the bottom so what we do with the Inferno Forge, we have to unlock slots so that we can put items in there. And the only way to do that is by getting your heat bar to full, so you can level up. So obviously I've got a couple of items where that is the case. So we need to drop a certain amount of ember. I'm going to say 32, I'm not sure of the exact number here. But that put it this way, that will be enough. So we'll drop 32 embers in there. And then we've got our pickaxe ready to level up. 
So then we'll close the hatch. You see the machine will start working. And then you can see that our pickaxe is in there now. And we've taken a look at it, we can see it now says level 1 on it. And similarly we can do the same for our turfing. Throw that in. Okay, I'm going to put two full stacks for the turfing. Because it seems to be not that easy to level this one up. Let's see how that's going. Level 1. Okay, so one stack didn't work, so it was somewhere between one stack and two stacks of of ember crystals I need to put in. So it's quite, you have to put in quite a lot of uh, materials to get this to work. Incidentally, if you don't have the item you need to repair something, just put down some of that isolated materia. Okay, so now we've got a modifier, let's, let's, let's use it for something. So I'm going to put the blasting core on both items. You can see, by the way, my heat level is reset as well, so we'll be getting more leveling up. So I'm going to put, let's go for, so we should have blasting, blasting one. So you can see the levels actually stack. And then we have blasting one. So what blasting one seems to do is it destroys nearby blocks, but it seems to favor blocks that are I think it favours softer blocks, and you can see this is how we would get the leveling up there. So the blasting effect is pretty cool for the sword. You can see all these enemies taking extra damage. Really, really wreck some of these enemies. So here's the resonating bell augment. If I right click on any block, it's going to highlight similar blocks in the area. I think it has to be vanilla blocks. Try with this mushroom block. So you can see the effect of that. A couple more now. So here we have a pig. And you can see, well, it cooked pork chop. And that's because the, the superhero will cook the food of any mob you attack, and also it will do additional damage. Now here we have the, this is ember casting, so this is from the caster orb. Each time you use it, as long as you've obviously got enough ember in your inventory, it will shoot, it will shoot a ray of ember. Also, it will, because it's a projectile, you'll also now be able to add additional projectile augments, which are from which are mainly used, obviously, for things that do projectiles anyway. Okay, so we need to repair the armor. You need to put ashen fabric for the cloak. And you can see, because you can only play two items on the Dawnstone Anvil, this is why you have to do it this way. By the way, if you want to get rid of something on it, so if you want to get rid of this from the pickaxe, just put it in on its own, and it will detach. So what I'd like to do this time is, with the armor, I've got an item called the Cinder Jet. That one doesn't seem to want to work for some reason. But that's how you do it manually anyway. So now I have the Cinder Jet. This... <laughs> wow. But this is bizarre. So it gives you... It's almost like you're a... A, a car or something. It's so odd. Pretty cool though. Okay, we have the flame barrier. Let's just have an ancient golem. We haven't seen one of these in the whole, in the whole episode. You 
Okay, they obviously how you get the archaic bricks. Didn't seem to work too well on that. Let's see if we can get it maybe a bit more effective here. So you can sort of see it. I imagine as, as, these these modifiers do increase the level. Okay, so, like I've mentioned, there's various things you can do with your armor, your tools, your weapons, the uh, the blazing ray, that will come like a shotgun as well, there's some projectile augments, and you can put the projectile augments on, on weapons, as long as you have the initial one that we saw there. Um, And you, and you and and you can put your and you can put the protector ornaments on tools as well. Obviously, a level two or above. So it's just so the final few things. One is this metallurgic dust. This is actually the hardest thing to make in the in alchemy because you need to use all of them. So that's fun. But what you can do with this and what this actually do. So obviously, this was a. This was a whole, a whole vein of coal, and now it's a whole vein, vein of redstone. Now it's some emeralds there. Now it's gold. This stuff is cool. Sometimes it turns it just into. That's pretty awesome, though. So definitely worth getting some of this stuff. So there's also the dawnstone gear. Remember that. So I believe you can place that instead of the iron gear. Hmm. I wonder what this says when you do that. Interesting that the Dawnstone gear is actually for members. I, I think you can still put it in the gears for Mystical Mechanics. Uh, there's also Creative Mechanical Source from Mystical Mechanics. And the final thing perhaps to look at is this. This is the field chart. This shows you, it requires no power, but it will show you the ember concentration in the area. So we can see, I happen to just teleport randomly here, and you can see in this area there's a huge amount. So if I take my gauge, you can see this is much higher. And you can see as I go this way, it becomes almost at the maximum. In fact, it may. But yeah, the maximum is about here. So if I went down, I'd get a huge amount of embers. And that's the end of embers rekindled mod spotlight.